Number 97. Which of the following molecules and ions contain polar bonds? And then which of these molecules and ions have dipole moments? So there's two questions here. We have to first find out whether this ClO2 ion, because there's a charge here, it's a minus, does this ion have polar bonds? And then does this ion have a dipole moment? Now, when we're trying to find out polar bonds, especially if they don't give you a Lewis structure, my suggestion is to draw the Lewis structure. It is one extra step, but I promise you by visualizing what it looks like will make it easier for you to find the polar bonds if there are any and to find the dipole moment. Now there's tons of videos on this channel just drawing Lewis structures and going step by step uh, as how to do it. So if you do need more guidance, you could always check those videos out on the channel. This one's going to kind of be like a quick inversion because we've done tons of practice. So you could pause the video and just see if your answer matches mine. Now in this case, we have a chlorine that's in the middle, surrounded by the two oxygens. For Lewis structures, it doesn't really matter, you know, where you put the oxygens. Just make sure that the oxygens are not in the middle. And then, let's see, to make this work, probably we're going to have a double bond here and a single bond here, right? This oxygen is going to have the two electrons. And this oxygen will have the six to get the octet. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think we are good. Now, since there is a double bond here, there are resonance structures in here. I could have put the double bond here, or I could have made this two single bonds. Um, it doesn't really matter what Lewis structure you have, just make sure that you have one of the correct resonance structures because you'll get the same answer regardless. Okay, so now the polar bonds, especially if they're talking about what type of bonds you have, you're looking at the actual two elements that are surrounding that bond. And for polar bonds, or nonpolar bonds, it does not matter what type of bond you have. The thing that matters is what elements are bound. And in this case, you only have one option. For this double bond, I have an oxygen and a chlorine. And then for this single bond, I have an oxygen and the chlorine. So for both of them, I have a bond between oxygen and chlorine. So I'm gonna just pull one of them out. When you're finding out your polar bonds, you only look at one part of the uh, atom, just the one bond. And now, if you wanna find out a polar bond, just know that the electronegativity difference, which is just a fancy way for saying subtraction, that subtraction between your electronegativity values should be between 0.4 and 1.8. So, just know that oxygen has a electronegativity of 3.5, so maybe I'll put that down here, 3.5, and chlorine is right over here, so we got 3.0. Just know that when you're doing your electronegativity difference, when you're subtracting these two numbers, your electronegativity difference is always going to be positive. So always take your higher number and minus it from your lower number. 3.5 minus 3 is 0 0.5. And we just made it right? The cutoff was 0.4, but we're in that realm. So since we made it, this for sure has polar bonds. So one part of the question down. Now we just have to find out if this ion as a whole has a dipole moment. And there's only one specific compound or one specific type of covalent molecule that has a dipole moment. And these are polar molecules. So yes, we found out that these consider, or these have polar bonds, but now I have to look at the whole molecule as a whole. And this is where the acronym SNAP comes in, S-N-A-P. The polar ones have the dipole moment. And if I just focus in on the A and the P, asymmetrical, is polar, so things that don't look the same. However, there is one big hint, uh, there's one little big trick that I could tell you that you can always identify a polar bond, and that's, or not polar bond, a polar molecule. 
And that's when your central atom, whoever it is, has the dots. If your central atom has dots, it is automatically polar. And my central atom, in this case, is chlorine, and the chlorine has two pairs of dots. I don't care how many, I just got to have one. And right off the bat for that, that means that this is a polar ion. I'm saying ion because it has a negative charge. And because of that, it does have a dipole moment. Because only polar molecules or polar bonds have those dipole moment. And these are your two answers. So ClO2 has polar bonds and has a dipole moment. And that's it. I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. I hope you're doing well out there and always keep learning. We've got tons of videos on the channel to help you guys out in your classes. So go use them. All right. I think it's pretty cool. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.